Hi gang, Scott Davenport here. In this video, I'll show you how to do texture blending in Luminar AI. It's a little different than what we had in Luminar 4 because layers are gone. We have no layers in Luminar AI. We still do have the moral equivalent of the texture overlay tool from Luminar 4. That functionality is in Luminar AI. It's part of Local Masks, and I'll show you how it works in this video with textures. And really quick, if you're interested in Luminar AI, thinking about adding it to your toolkit, check the show notes. Links there give me a little bit of support. Don't cost you anything extra. And there's an offer code down there that may save you 10 bucks. So let's have a look at textures in Luminar AI. Now, as I mentioned, layers are gone. So if you're accustomed to doing texture blending with layers, you don't have that option in Luminar AI. But what we do have is in the local masking area. The local masking, we activate this tool group and there's nothing here. We have an add button. We have two different kinds of local masks we can add. And in this video, we're going to explore textures. I've got a different video that talks about basic. The textures is where we can bring in a external photo. And in this case, we'll do a texture. But if you're already thinking, hey, can I do composites and bring in a different photo? Yes, you can. You can treat any image file, if it's a JPEG or a TIFF, something that's baked, not a raw file, but something that's been cooked into a JPEG or a TIFF, you can bring those in with the load texture button. I'll load a traditional texture here, and I've got a, a bunch that I have, and I'll just take um, something that's got a lot, of, uh, a lot of crunch to it, maybe this one here, so we can see what's going on. So let me open that up, and we'll see that texture show up over the photo. Now, you'll notice my cursor has become like this masking tool because this is a local masking group. The notion is you're blending this in. And the first thing I want to explore with you with the textures is just the overall tool layout. The top half, this is where your masking tools are. We have paint, we can do a radial mask, we can do a gradient mask, and then these various controls are for the mask itself. So in the case of the brush, you're changing the radius size and the feather, the opacity. If you're choosing a radial mask, those di controls disappear because you're doing the work in the uh, photo itself in the preview area. You know, same thing for the gradient mask. I will show you a radial mask in a little bit, but let's just leave this at paint right now. Now the bottom half of the controls, this is for the texture itself. Let me open up the advanced settings as well. To prove the point, opacity. This opacity slider is for the texture. So I can make the texture softer or I can cover up the entire photo. And I'll do that for now to show you the next couple of controls here. We have zoom. We can zoom in, we can zoom out, we can just get that back to nominal. We have the orientation, we can flip things horizontally and vertically. And in the advanced section, we have our blending options and a bunch of controls. I'll come back to blending in a moment. These controls change the texture, not the photo you're working on, but the texture. So I can change brightness and darkness of the texture. If I take that texture and make it completely invisible, completely opaque, you know, notice nothing is changing on my photo. These sliders here affect the texture. And that gets interesting because you can boost contrast in your texture, you can take color away from it, or if you really wanted to, you can color tint things as well. And so I'll tell you what, I'll amplify that rust a little bit just by nudging that hue slider around. And now back to the blending options. I'll bring the opacity of the texture down to about halfway so we get a better feel for what's going on. But these are your classic layer blending options. And really, the, one of the best ways to work with these is just hover over them and you know, audition them to see how they work. This is normal. We get different effects as we blend through. And for this photo, I'm kind of just watching the sky. I'm not interested in masking away Il Duomo. I just want to have the sky get a little bit of interesting character. Luminosity is kind of interesting with this one. But I, I liked what soft light was doing and what hard light was doing. Uh, let's choose soft light. And from here is where you would kind of finish off your masking work because a lot of times we're doing a blend of a texture. We don't want it everywhere. I'll return up to my paint tools and let's get the radius here. And I'll go through and paint into the structure itself. 
and then all through the foreground. I'm make my brush a little bit bigger with the bracket keys just so I can get through that section quicker. And you'll notice the texture seems to have disappeared. Well, I'm painting in with this red mask where I want the texture applied. When I'm all done, it was a little easier for me to work visually by looking at the building, but I can invert the mask in the upper right, invert, and now we see that bit of texture showing up in the sky. I can refine its opacity, make it stronger, make it less, whatever you like. Uh, I did promise to show you a radial mask with a texture and well the cool thing about local masking is you can have more than one so you can add multiple adjustments here so I'll go to the add button add a second texture I get a new set of controls notice I have the first texture I added is down here I've got a brand new set of controls I can load in a completely different texture and let's get something that's really dark and I'll use it to uh, do kind of a textured vignette so we'll add that in let's just push it really really far and um, advanced settings, let's just try like you know dark, and I'm watching the edges of the photo multiply. That's like really, really dark. In the masking area, I'll use the radial mask, click and drag to draw you know a big oval here. And now I can shape this into you know a soft yet textured vignette for this photo. And as I take brightness up and down, we'll see the darkness increase on only the textured area. It might be a little easier to see if I start hovering through blending mode. You see those edges are changing because that's where I have my texture applied. I can push contrast on that if I wanted to take the color out of it. You still have all those controls for that texture. But uh, that is how we're working with textures in Luminar AI, local masking, add and you have a texture item, you can add a bunch of different textures, mask each one individually, you have the blending modes, there just are no layers. So the limitations are really in terms of how you can position the texture. You can scale it, you can flip it horizontally and vertically, but you can't really do any rotation on it or, uh, or like moving it around, like panning it around. But you've got the access there. Hope this video helps you understand it. And if you've got questions, go ahead and drop them below. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.